GM Lords, welcome to Lords Table mm -hmm. number 18. It's Thursday, the 21st of December. If you're in uh, the, a different time zone to me, it's currently Friday morning for myself and a few others on the call. Um, welcome to uh, the, the final Lords Table of 2023. I think the objective here is to uh, review a little of what happened over the course of 2023 and, and, and a lot has been built both in terms of knowledge, tech stack, and um, also along the, 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 the path to a decentralized DAO, um, a decentralized gaming, on-chain gaming ecosystem. So we'll review those things. We'll look ahead at um, uh, Eternum v0.3, and we'll also look ahead at the next era of Loot Survival, which is the composable era. Um, so that's the the topics for today. And then at the end, there will be some news updates, lots of news as ever, and also a, a Q&A. So if anyone has any questions, you can either pop them in the chat as we go along or um, raise your hand at the end or just, just come up and, and ask questions or say things. So we'll start with... Um, an update from Loth on the march towards Eternum V.3. Loth, you are going to share your own screen for this, aren't you? Yep. All right. All right. Yeah, well, um, it's been a pretty big year. Um, uh, I've I've got a few things uh, mm -hmm. I want to cover. I've got a we've got a Discord um, slide deck, a Figma, which I'm going to cover, um, and then uh, I'm going to show the um, the new Eternum client, which um, the team has been furiously mm -hmm. gobbling away to get up and running, and it includes significant updates mm -hmm. since the last time um as well as an updated scroll um which everyone can uh read about uh which includes all the the features in this release and kind of the kind of path to kind of like the idea of like how we're iterating on this game and you know where we kind mm -hmm. of started um it's going to start with the scroll um i mean I, I i see a lot of familiar faces here and you know for the last two years you know we've really been you know, really pushing the boundaries of of like what on-chain games and and in these worlds um, can be. And you know, two years ago, you know, over, being overly ambitious, you know, we thought, oh, how hard can it be to build a a fully open world that lasts forever? Turns out it's a pretty hard problem. Um, but you know, we've been every iteration of this game and this world has been a um big progression. So. Um, and where we are now, we're in a really great place where finally the technology stack um, is, you know, we're at a place where it needs to be um, that is abstracted enough to allow people to build on top. Um, it's abstracted enough to build like complex worlds that are maintainable and extendable. Um, and it's fast enough and it's soon going to be cheap enough. However, we're still not quite there yet. Um, but we... Like it, it, nowhere, nowhere in the market is really there yet to really build these these expansive worlds that are cheap um, and fast, um, and you know inherit the security of of Ethereum mainnet. Um, and we're not really in the business of um, uh, you know building something on like a side chain. You know we want to build this world with the same security guarantees as a mainnet. And so that's really the we're we're un, unwavering in that in that um. So. So yeah, so there's been um for the last like six months, um uh Rochelle, Lee, Black Mirror, um, Amaro, uh, myself, Credence, um have been um rebuilding the Eternum world from the ground up, um, using the Dojo framework. Um and right now we have a um we have a version which we're calling version 0.3, um, which we're calling the Order Wars, 
um, and it includes a bunch of new features um, that a lot of people on this call probably don't even know about because we've just been um, gobbling away in it. Um, but this is due to release in like um, it was. We we're hoping they release this this month, but um, a couple of things got delayed, and so uh, it's going to be shipping on a um, custom um, katana instance. So it's going to be very very fast um, uh, in January. Um, and this game, uh, this version um, of this world um, revolves around. I'm gonna show some client stuff. Um, so it really revolves around. Well, hang on, just just to wind back a bit. You know where where we're at with mm -hmm. like this version is. You know we're we're trying to build it up complexity as we go. And so we're layering bit on bit of the game every every version, um, and this version includes a bunch of these features. It's definitely not the final like release, um, but it's including a bunch of things um, around like attacking, uh, resource trading, um, banking, trading, um, roads, um, leaderboards, hyperstructures, um, all these like features that we're like trying out in this version to see you know um, you know what is good and what is not. It's a very difficult thing to build an open game. Um, and so the, the kind of like the approach that we're taking is, um, you know, like, you know, version releases every month from here. Um, we've got it to a point right now where we can do that. We can ship features really quickly. Um, so after this release, you know, then we'll, we'll then we'll focus on version four, which will be like end of, end of, um, January, um, and then, and so forth. And so, you know, from the, from the feedback we get from this, we'll figure out what is like, what wasn't good, what, what, what was good, double down on that and whatnot. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at with this. And so a lot of work has been has has gone into making this client um, and the contract stack. It's been a lot of iteration to get to where we are. Um, and so uh, the game revolves around um, selecting an order. Um, and uh, in this test, you this will automatically just settle five realms for you. So everyone will have five realms. Um, and there's a whole new uh, progression system based around um, uh, your realm level. You have to level up to unlock things. Um, and so, you know, we're going to build some wheat farms here. Um, it's a whole, like, uh, there's, there's a lot we can cover in this. Um, but I suggest everyone read the scroll after mm -hmm. this. Um, but I'll cover some, like, high-level things. And so, you know, everything is here is, is um, optimistically rendered when you click things. So it feels really snappy. Uh, trading's locked until level one. Um, I've got a billion resources just because this is a demo, but you won't have that um, uh, when you start. Um, so you can see here, these are all my realms. Um, they're all a level zero at the moment. Um, one interesting thing that we've had since the beginning, actually, from version zero, is that there is a level of entropy in this game, and so things decay over time. Um, so when you level up this this world, uh, you'll be on level one now. Uh, so level up the realm, you'll be on level one now, but your your realm will decay over time, and you'll eventually go back to zero if you don't keep leveling up. Um, and when you level up, you know you unlock um, the possibility to trade, um, uh, trade in, in level one, and then oh, we can't get to military until level three. Um, and we've created this whole new trading system where you can do either a complex trade where you can trade, um, you know, any number of resources for any other number of resources. So it's kind of like a bartering system. Um, now this is like a this is like advanced trading system. Um, we don't su suggest everyone to like. Th this will be kind of like when you're um, you're trading with you know, people in your in your guild or your, or your friends and whatnot, and you've kind of like negotiated something. Um, but in the background, um, in this world, anything can be traded for anything else. And so there's been a lot of time trying to um, uh, work on that, um, which is, is kind of, um, it, it's just like one of the primitive layers um, that's been designed. Um, and then this has been abstracted onto this. Um, and then also on top of that, there's like a simple trading system where you can trade um, a resource mm -hmm. for realms with anybody else. Um, and so this is a, a these are the same trading system except this is just a um, like abstraction on top. And so you'll be able to see here like the best ask for wood, um, the best bid price. You'll be able to buy it. Um, yeah. 
Uh, so you can see here, this is just one wood for um, one lord. So, but yeah, I can accept that. Um, I can create a caravan. Um, caravans are like the um, yeah, like the, the the other really deep part of this game that we've built is um, this idea of like there's, there's like a spatial distance between each realm, and so um, and there's like a carry um, a limit on you know or like you know how, how you can trade things in this world too. So you can't just like trade you know a million dragon hide you know and and, and instantly you know there's there's like this there's a level of um, realness to trading. It takes time. Um, and also there's a carry limit, so you can't just like, um, you know, yeah. Uh, and so you see there, I've just created an order. Um, oh, sorry, I've just accepted that order. Um, but yeah, so there's a very diverse um, trading system that's been built here. And so when you can imagine this with like hundreds of players, um, there'll be like a very crazy market going on. Um, and there'll be big arbitrage opportunities for people that are producing um, in productive zones and whatnot. Um, there's a couple other things. Uh, we've actually created this idea of like a labor market that's split the world up into zones. Um, and so, um, your within each zone in the world, um, there's actually a a like a labor market. And so, if a lot of labor is being produced in zone two, for example, the actual cost for production will increase. Um, and you can see that here. And so that's what this is. Um, and so it kind of just creates this really interesting economic um, kind of variability between the world. Um, and so, you know, you can imagine if not much people are producing in one zone, then it gives, offers an arbitrage opportunity for another one. Um, you see here, I got my offers, direct offers, etc., caravans, roads. You can actually build roads between realms to increase the um, speed of your caravans. Um, so, um, you know, if you've got a got a network of realms you can build realms uh, roads between them all and you can increase your trade um you can also build roads to banks um which we'll cover in a second um so yeah there's, there's a lot of stuff here to explore and the game's kind of um in a really really cool um really cool place um so yeah um and also, this is like the bleeding edge of like on-chain game right now. Like, this is like the super. This is super snappy. Everything syncs with the world. Um, it really, it's really a really nice experience. Um, so, oh, hang on. I need to just upgrade another realm. What did I upgrade? I've got infinite resources at the moment, but that won't normally happen. There are no god twinses on chain. Sorry? There are no god twinses on chain. Gods? Yeah, there are no gods. There'll be nobody with infinite resources when this. Oh, no, no, yeah, there'll be no infinite resources. Yeah, that's, that's right. Um, this is just dead build. Um, so, hyperstructures are kind of like the key of this um, version, which we're hoping the this version will go for like a month um, and we'll, we'll get a lot of information around. Like the trading and every all the mechanics of everything, um, and the hyperstructures are just these like big structures that take a lot of resources to build, um, and you build them with your order. And um, uh, when you build them with your order, you actually get you get global order buffs. So you know you get an increased food production, increased mine production, um, faster travel, and better combat every time you level up your hyperstructure. So it's worthwhile doing with your order, and it, they'll they'll take it'll be a collaborative effort with your order to build these things. Um, and so yeah, it's a and you can see here this is my realm, so I can send I can send my wooden fish, um, but I'm not going to do that. Um. And then the other feature which I'll just cover, and then I'll probably just leave it here, is this idea of banks. Um, and so this is like, this is really just an experimental feature. Um, it's just, this is by no means like the final version of this. Um, oh no, my Chrome just crashed. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it keeps doing that. Hang on. Sorry guys. Am I still there? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're still here, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I, I, does anyone else's Chrome does it, do that? Um, so, anyway, I'll just get back to where I am. 
Where was I? Oh, yeah, the banks. Um, yeah, so the banks are this like new feature um, and this kind of experimental thing that we're doing. And banks allow you to trade um, food and wheat for uh, lords. So they're based on a um, VRGDA, which is a um, variable rate gradual Dutch auction. Um, and so it will... Um, it basically is it's 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 an infinite well the auction goes forever and it is a, it's a fixed um kind of um supply and demand curve and so if a lot of people are trying to sell food then the then the cost per lord will, will decrease um if not enough people are then the then the cost per lord will increase and so this is the only way to get lords within the game um right now um and there's like 16 uh banks all scattered across the world and so this this will also create a um, interesting arbitrage opportunity because the closest bank you can see here got like this this the closest bank um, is twenty one kilometers away from me um, on this realm, um, but the furthest ones you know are the side of the map. Um, but it might make sense to actually trade with one that's further away from you. Um, it's all these like little these little economic features that we built in just to test to create like a diverse. Um, or as diverse system as possible, just to create all these different variables that people think about. Um, and so that's the banking system. And then so when you when you when you trade with people, you know you can trade with lords or you can trade directly with resources. Um, and then military wise, um, actually one other thing. So ah oh, fuck. Unfortunate. Oh my god. Okay, I'll just okay maybe I'll just hold it there. I don't know why my it's just my um. Machine very happy. My Chrome, my, uh, my Chrome just seems to crash every now and again. I don't know, something wrong with it. It's just really annoying. Um, it might be a memory leak or something. I don't know. So in terms of military, there you can create. It's it's like a simplified. Um, I guess if people played earlier versions of the game, there was an incredibly elaborate. Um, uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Combat system, but it's too complicated. So yeah. to talk us through how it's evolved. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, it just kind of goes back to the whole point of like this iterative kind of approach that we're taking to building this. And I suggest anyone trying to build on chain games to do this approach as well, um, because like it's inherently going to be hard enough anyway to build like combat. Uh, we've taken the approach of just being a, doing a very simple um, uh, system in this version, and there's really only one type of unit. And with this one unit, you can either um, uh, create a, your city watch, um, which gives you um, defensive um, buff. Um, and so when people attack you, they have to go through your city watch. Mm -hmm. um, or you can create a raiding party, and then you go when you create a raiding party, um, you I'll just create some. I won't be able to actually get to anybody, but um, you see how fast it is? Like it's crazy. Um, but when you create a raiding party, you know I can travel to you know this guy. Ah, um, oh, I can only attack realms. I can't attack those realms yet. But um, when I create a raiding party and I go to another realm, then I can actually attack them. And if they don't have a um, a, a watchtower, um, I can steal uh, a random amount of their resources according to how many raiders I've sent. So the raiders have like a carry limit, um, and you'll steal their resources and you'll also burn their food. Um, and so you kind of pillage and steal their stuff, um, which is cool. So there's a big burning mechanism there. Yeah, so that's uh, it, it's going to get a little crazy. We've just, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, and and then the next version, you know, we'll we'll work on like another troop type. Um, and then you know, add, add add complexity as we go, rather than starting off with like a crazy complex game as well as everything else. So this is like a the the, the intro into the into the combat system. Um, but yeah, so I'm probably going to leave it there, and um, I'll let people. Um, yeah, so the, the plan is to, it's kind of like this part of the year right now, everyone's writing down, so it's going to be hard to um, ship this in the next like couple of days, but the plan is to do a full-blown release of this in like um, January um, with a correct, with like a proper um, serviced server um, and try to get, you know, a few hundred people playing this at the same time. And um, yeah, it's going to get wild. I've got two questions for you, Dave. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the first is when people are conceptualizing this as a, a game and, you know, we, this is the, the base layer 
mm. all, all, this, all the central part of the realm's mm. autonomous world. Like, how do you, in a kind of you know simple to understand way, mm. articulate what Eternum is in relation to realms dot world, but the broader world? Yeah. So um, Eternum is really like it is, is kind of like a fuzzy boundary of like Eternum and the realms world, and I think Eternum as a game is like you know, the initial systems and, you know, mechanics of the world and maybe, like, the, the kind of, like, the original economic layer. Um, but there's also, like, a deep game loop and, like, a fun game loop to bootstrap the world with. But it's really, like, it's not... It's never really going to be, like, a finished game because you can't really call it a finished game because it's all open. It's like, is Ethereum finished? Like, it just doesn't make sense, right? Because there's always going to be iteration on it because it's open. Um, and so... Where we're kind of marching towards this idea of like this like MVP economic model and like you know um, MVP game loop um, that's enough to bootstrap the world, um, but it's really only one part of the world. And so um, I I kind of talk about it. You know, we we talk about it here in here as like the foundation of a digital society um, uh, that you know that is infinitely expandable. Um, and I talk about a bit about the autonomous worlds and whatnot. Um, but, you know, probably a, a good way to look at it is like this. Um, and so, you know, this is the Realms World, um, you know, um, network, uh, which will be built, you know, within the next, you know, um, six months. Um, and it's going to be like a custom um, roll-up that will, that will be an L3 that will that'll settle into StockNet. And within this network, there'll be like the Eternum world. There'll be like the Eternum kind of like systems and components that will have like an economic layer. Um, you know, there'll be like the underworld, um, which will like share some of those components, share some of the resources, but will introduce its own set of like resources, be rising revenant. Um, there'll be like a version of instance of a loot survivor that can run in it. There'll be like the crypts and caverns and all these other games um, that are kind of being built in the realms world. It can all exist within this single roll up. Um, and anybody else wants to deploy stuff as well. Um, and they can all share, they basically share a lot of these. Um, uh, uh, you know, turn of resources or introduce new things. Um, and so it's really just like the bootstrapping part of the world, but it's really just like a single, like one part of it. It's not like the final game. Um, yeah. Okay. And then the second question from me is looking at Eternum, the, the, the game world that's been created. How do you? Uh, it's, 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 it's an open question because we won't know until it's deployed and we see how people you know, actually play the game and, and, and do they choose to act you know, with their order? Do they choose to act selfishly? Mm. You know, how do you envisage people will play Eternum like what's, how, when you're um, you know, meeting with the team and, 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 and building out the mechanics of the gameplay loop? Um, what do you envisage yeah, well, will happen? I mean... <laughs> I mean, it's it's un it's unsure what people exactly will do because it's hard to predict. But the hope is that you know people funnel into their own orders, and we create a a world where there is a lot of tribalism around orders, um, and there's a lot of min maxing to try and um you know uh, destroy other people's um, hyperstructures, build banks, um, and kind of like this this deep base economic layer that everything's built that everything else is built off. Um, and then you add in all the variables of these other games and other potential resources. And to, to note, like, the, the trading system that I just described is, like, open. Like, you can add other resources into that easily because it's all the same contracts. Um, and so a lot of these, like, foundational systems that have been designed at Eternum can be leveraged in every other game. And so they don't have to be re rebuilt again. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's undetermined exactly how people are going to play this first version, but that's why we just need to, like, test it this and have, you know, a few hundred people play it, and um, yeah. we'll see what happens. Awesome. Lovely. Thank you very much for... Um, um, for, for, the, for go on. Yeah, I was going to say, there's, there's one thing... Um, uh, I kind of went to a bit too long in the game demo, but um, uh, just, just for people joining, or, you know, or just, just to cover this again, um, because I know we talk about L3s, and they kind of sound like a meme, but they're actually happening. And like they will be the best way to build these worlds, um, and that's yeah high conviction on that. Um, but basically, how they work is you know you have like Ethereum mainnet, you have like a public stock net, which is like the the, the actual stock net that we're all like doing stuff on. 
Um, and on, on the public stock net, you have like, you know, the OG Loot Survivor, obviously, you have like the Lord's Marketplace, um, you have any other collections, and maybe some other like, very, um, you know, um, specific type of, you know, assets or, or games. Um, but ultimately, you're still going to be um, constrained on stock net, um, even post like the, the Ethereum update. Um, and so, you know, really, the, 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 one, of the one of the beauties of, of, um, of stocks is that you can do this thing called recursive proofs. And so, you know, the way, um, uh, you know, um, ZK uh, rollups work right now is that they, they generate this proof and then they settle their state to Starknet, um, um, but you can always, like, verify the proof, right? And so um, what, what the L3 does is basically does, does the same thing, but it settles its proof to Starknet, which then settles to mainnet. And so you can reconstruct everything up to the L3 um, with this, and inherit the same security as, as um, you know, as Ethereum mainnet. Um, um uh yeah um so so yeah you know that's 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 how these that's how these l3s work and like we're actually we're, we're building this right now and this is this will be the path to create these big immersive worlds that i have the same security um and this is the only the only real way to do it right now um um to to inherit the same security um so yeah um, and then even taking that a step further, um, you know, maybe second half of next year is um, you can you can then create these like uh, mini rollups um, that exist that like spawn off the L3 with maybe like specific dungeon instances um, that need even higher um, compute and reduced latency with like ten people in them, and you kind of like popping these things into existence and destroying them um, as games come and go, and so that's kind of like the um, uh, you know, the, the other path to scalability. Well, it's like part of the path, right? So you have like the, the, the kind of like canonical L3 and then you have like these little these little sharded um, instances that you can run games and dungeons and stuff on. So, so yeah. Something that really I think is helpful for if you're, if you're trying to get your head around um, CK proofs is, is that you can use like, um, examples from other networks and, 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 you know, in terms of computing, you can kind of think about a CK proof as almost like a zip file uh, that can move between like layers, between layer, layer, you know, layer two start net and layer three and other layers because it's a very compressed piece of data that can just move very easily between the networks. And the kind of way to maybe think about this is, you know, like a, a compressed zip file uh, or also like the idea of like, you know, broadband versus dial-up in terms mm. of computation on chain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like compressed computation, ZK proofs. Um, you don't have to rerun it all again. You know, so you can do this. And and just a note as well, like you know, um, you know, Bitcoin was really like the breakthrough in like you know this like decentralized consensus. And then, but it was really you know restricted in what it can do. And then you know, Ethereum comes along and and does its you know um, world computer. You know, and and suddenly, you know, you can do all this other stuff now, um, but you can verify it on a decentralized network. Um, and then, you know, zk is now like the next frontier, and it's kind of happening. Is that you actually don't need to create like a decentralized node network. Um, you can actually run stuff in a centralized sequencer, um, but you can just verify the proof. And so people can't cheat because you know you still get the consensus mechanism, um, but without having to decentralize the um, the nodes. And so, you know, that's that's actually relevant to what we're doing because, you know, the, the, these sequences can actually be centralized, um, in you know, so to speak. Um, but, you know, you still get the same security guarantees because they all roll up and settle. Um, and so, yeah, it's just something to think about um, over the next, like, year as I think this, this narrative will start to take shape. Um, so, yeah, you can just verify everything now. Awesome. Okay, cool. Lovely. Yeah. Right. Well, um, we'll move along now to, I'll share my screen again, to a, uh, a review of progress made along the path to decentralization in 2023 and to look ahead at um, some of the things that are coming up in the start of Q4. Cal, can you uh, do that, sir? Hello. Hello. Yes, um, yeah, so I'll just go over a few slides I've done 
Um, sorry if they're a bit bland. They've been a bit rushed on my way back from the airport, but I'll try my best and I'll I'll be quick. And we can go back to more exciting stuff. Um, yeah, so the past year, we've had a lot of changes in the DAO. Um, I'll just go over a few of them. And, yeah. Um, so um, we're slowly progressing to move the treasury fully on chain. Um, we're expanding out our multi sigs and changing account and standards through diff several bips. Um, we've funded a new trailer. Um, we've pushed through our operating agreement, which is working towards our incorporation. Uh, <laughs> we've changed our liquidity profile, which is moving all our stuff onto a cubo on Starknet. Rest in peace, Arrakis. You will be missed. Um, and we've created Frontless House, which is our funding platform for builders in the ecosystem. Um, what all this kind of amounts to is the aim that although um, we had as we well we had essentially a multi sig, which is a form of centralization in a way, because it's a group of five, six, seven, eight people who control all the funds. The aim is to not have that anymore. Have the all of DAO controlled assets fully on chain and fully decided by the DAO as it should be. Um not just through off chain consensus. Um we're getting there. I think um it, we we should be uh, a long way around the route come next uh the end of year's next review. Um but yeah, so what's next? Um Treasury via Snapshot X. So this is really what I'm on about is um our next uh moving all our treasury fully on chain. Um <laughs> pardon me, sorry. Um so yeah, this is will hopefully be coming around Q1. Um there's a few points that we're kind of waiting on Snapshot X, but essentially what that'll be is we'll have a fully on chain um treasury, um on chain voting, um, which is a, a key requirement there. Um because, again, we don't want to rely on off-chain stuff. Um, what that usually comes with is very expensive transactions for 8,000 realm holders or a few mm -hmm. thousand realm holders, um, which amounts to end up being not a, a shit ton of money. Um, but what we're going to use is Snapshot X, which will be on StockNet. So you'll still have your realms on our one, more than likely. Um, and you'll be able to vote on StockNet for like 10p, if not less. Um, probably banner time for eight four four, probably a lot less. Um, so yeah, so that would be a, a good improvement coming Q Q one, hopefully, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, um, we will have some more frontless house proposals um, with the new accounting standards. We've really defined um, what funds are kind of for what, um, and what I mean by that is. We have X amount of funds for Frontless House. We have X amount for um, development work, X amount for emissions, and so on and so forth. Um, so what we'll be working on in the next few weeks slash Q1, we'll be really defining um, funding for Frontless House and funding for builders and how um, those allocations will be emitted. Again, this will go through in a DAO, so everyone will be aware as it happens. Um, Finalize an incorporation with my DAO, so that should be any moment now. Um, it's Christmas holidays, so I think there's a little bit of a delay with those guys there, but it should be like pretty much January the first type thing. Um, we'll be fully incorporated with my DAO, um, so we can now sign stuff and do some other fun stuff because of that. Um, yeah, and so only dust. Do you want to move to the next slide, Secretive? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so with the um, core team controlled um, funds and all the funds that are for building out a turn um, we've, I don't know if you've seen bit 27, we essentially promised to use the rest of those funds to fund, uh, well, obviously they're already to fund a turn but specifically to use them within only dust. Um, and what that really means for the DAO is it, it just opens another, like, um, section of transparency everyone will be able to see every single issue and every single thing piece of development when it's done 
um, through only Dust. Um, and it'll also mean that outside contributors, outside of the core team, if they see an issue in there, they can go in and get paid for it. So we're no longer just relying on the core team. Um, if there are issues that other people or outside contributors want to come in and help with. Um, yeah, I think now that, that's a fair enough summary. Yeah. Um, Lords is, is, is that Lords has been added to um, Only Dust as the, yeah. the payment token for the work done via this. You know, Only Dust is a kind of open source collaboration platform, which I think is starting at native and starting to look at other chains, but it's another really cool ecosystem project. And it's, it's lovely to be, you know, part of our decentralization journey, also meshing with their. Um, pretty cool platform. Yeah, I think I think it's also a, a, a pseudo good form of advertising within Starknet developers too. As there's not there, there's quite a few um, on it now, but it being with Lords on there as payment tool and us being there with quite mm -hmm. a lot of Lords that we'll be putting in there, mm -hmm. it'll yeah, hopefully it'll attract some more builders um, within Starknet and you know. Showing that when they're real deal, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And, and certainly, Starknet will be looking at what's going on on Only Dust in terms of you know if people contribute to projects. Um, yes, it's highly likely that, that that this is the kind of place that that the Starknet Foundation will be certainly. Um, if I were a developer, that's where I'd be thinking of of, of seeking work. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Correct. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, sorry again. These are quite lackluster slides. They were a bit rushed, but yeah. Um, from this house. Um, so I won't go over all the front of um people. We'll we'll have our own call for that. Um, but we've done two front of house rounds so far. Given out two million lords. Tried some of really really good talent with Fern Starknet. Um, we currently got eighteen teams helping build out. Um, our realms autonomous world vision. Um, there'll be wait, did I okay? So, yeah, I'll, I'll know this first. Um, so you know, we've had a few people asking, like, what's what's happening, and you know, what, what's everyone doing? Like, there's been like no betas or anything and stuff like this. And, um, games take a while for one, if we all haven't noticed. <laughs> did I just hello? Hello. Hello. Yeah, yes. Did I just yeah. disconnect? I'm back. Okay, cool. No, it just like it went crazy for a second. Sorry. Um, but um, we've just been trying to push for a bit more. Again, a bit more transparency within the um, the team, trying to make sure everyone can see. So we've currently we're working with I think OX. This is here. Hello, O. Um, so the Herald, um, one of the actual frontless house uh, mm -hmm. grantees, they're going to be doing a weekly um. A, a weekly article. Um, I'll actually I'll link them in the chat for people. Um, but they're going to be doing a weekly article, just giving us a quick update on uh, frontless house builders, what's going on in the ecosystem, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so people can really see the the massive amount of work that's getting done. It's I think it's really underappreciated how 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 much work's getting done between all those teams. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, and also, yeah, there's um oh yeah. I don't know if you want to say hello, you're more than free, but I'll just keep going on otherwise. Um, yeah, uh, and also there's, there's the notion is now, and that will be just tracking the rigid outlines and you can have a quick glance uh, exactly what everyone's doing. Oh, no problem, though. You don't need to speak, don't worry. I'll keep rambling on. Um, yeah, so the notion's there, and it'll just give you a rigid outline and breakdown of exactly where everyone's at and what everyone's mm -hmm. doing. Um, that's continually, it has all the milestones in there and whatnot, and also like a nice breakdown of links and where everyone is at um, as of kind of this moment. Um, but yeah, Cal, two options. Um, and <laughs> I'll, I'll also talk a bit about the, the, the week in review from, from the Herald, but from your experience of talking to all the different France and House teams, how are they, because the, the grants are uh, milestone based, aren't they? They only unlock Mm -hmm. uh, the lords when they've completed milestones, and you'd be close to you know all these different projects. How, generally speaking, are people tracking against their milestones at the moment? Uh, uh, shock horror! All the gaming ones are 
uh, a late because everyone's always optimistic when building games. Um, I, I, I pretty much knew this when you, when you were doing it. Everyone knows Wait, this, what? but um, they um, only like weeks, not not like months. Um, but they're all doing they're all doing good. Um, they're like two thirds, I'd say, in the way through the milestones, depending on the teams. Um, yeah, they're, they're doing good. Um, I think we'll have a few betas come in in January. Um, so I think we got Rise and Revenant, Risk of Realms will be doing a beta in January. Um, I think Call of Banners will be around then, and Arcane Assembler, I think, any minute. Um, so they're all the round ones slowly coming to fruition now. Um, and and yeah. uh, the the Crits and Caverns versus Loot Survivor is is playable now as well. So I think probably just oh, yeah. the, the, the point we're making here is that we're going to get closer to, it's going to be easier for you to access information about the current state of the different projects building. We're looking to give them that regular platform to be able to update everyone via the, um, the Herald's newsletter. And, and yeah, there'll be a notion in place as well, so you can go and check in at your own kind of convenience. Uh, but yeah, expect a lot basically in terms of um, prototypes and, and betas in, in, in Q1. Um, certainly the early part of the year, there's, there's a lot sort of slated. Yeah, well, we'll have yeah. we'll have some fun betas within the next month. We'll pretty much start seeing. So in the first round was just over three months. Um, well, actually, pretty much just on three months. Um, and we'll start seeing the fruition of that kind of starting now. Um, and then you can expect there's a couple months between the second round. So, you know, at that time, and you'll probably start seeing the fruition of those then. Um, but yeah, some really great work going on there. Um, I've lost my train of thought. But yeah, uh, delegation. Okay, so there. Delegation, let's go over that. Um, so the delegation within Frontless House um, will be reset. It's actually today. Uh, I think it's like a few hours left of the first delegation round. Um, so we'll be doing a new one at the. I, th I, th I think I'll just we can do it on January the first because everyone's no one's going to be available to be doing applications to delegation on like the twenty fifth of December. So I think it'll just be best if we do January the first. It will be a week to apply to be a delegate, and then the following week people delegate. Um, but yeah. Awesome. That's and um, that w how many delegates do we have? How many, roughly, how many rounds we delegated last time? Uh, it was about 800, I, th I think, dele delegated total. Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe a bit more off the top of my head. Yeah, awesome. So we'll, we'll make a push and we'll ask everyone in the community to, to, to reach out to anyone they know who might be you know, still holding, but. Um, not engaged in the governance process because obviously the amount of detail involved, but they can come along at the start of January and delegate to make sure their their realms are active in the ecosystem. Lovely. All right. Um, the this was going to be a section on like a real explain like I'm, I'm five uh, explanation of the tech stack for 2024 from Loaf. Loaf, you kind of did this in the end of the last at the end of your first part of your presentation. Do you want to to yeah, I like, pretty much ran through that? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean I guess just just if you were just to sum up, because we can might you know, can just basically create a little mini section of this that we can put out separate as music content. But if you were to sum up the, oh, the, the tech stack, yeah, we're thinking about dojo, thinking about StartConnect, but like create you know, pitching it at a level that non developers can understand are really the kind of the, the benefits to a gaming ecosystem, an on-chain gaming ecosystem, through the choices that have been made over the last couple of years. Ah, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think we're well, we're actually like there now. Like, you know, we can build these games. You know, at a at a pace. Um, you know, two years ago, building a game and then adding a feature to it was like an absolute nightmare. Like it took ages. Um, and now we're at a point where, um, you know, Rochelle, Leet, and 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 Black Mirror, you know, taking Eternum, the the kind of framework that's been designed you know can ship a feature in like a week um from contracts and in credence um can can ship a feature in like a week of like you know 
um, from contracts deployed to into the client. And so, um, you know, and, and everything that's led up to that, you know, has really been the last like two years of progress as well as like the, the massive leaps and bounds that, um, that, that Dojo and, and that team has, um, has, has built as well. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and it all had, had to be basically built. Um, but now that because it's so abstracted away, you know, um, you know, a lot of the front end house builders um, can leverage all of the that stack um, uh, to build their games too. Um, and so, you know, it's it's this compounding effect. And then you bundle that up with like the these production L threes that are coming online. Um, you know, definitely expecting you know Q one. Um, and, and it, but even just like testing these games, you know, getting to a game that is as um, as fast as possible, and then being able to share them around and people test them um, is is massively valuable. And like that's where we're at right now. Um, you know, so the next kind of boss is 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 kind of deploying these things into production on L threes, um, which we're like, you know, it's, it's very close. Um, and you know, we've got the the full support of. The Dojo mm-hmm. ecosystem, the Stark ecosystem, um, you know, to get there, you know, and there's a lot of eyes um, and and support um, everywhere we look. So yeah, no, I mean, I think 2024 is going to be the breakout year for on-chain games. Um, two years ago, it was, you know, it was early, um, but you know, it's 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 worth being early and just you know um, staying convicted in the in the idea, and you know, you can see the market finally taking notice of like. Of the benefits of on-chain games, I mean, I think like <laughs> um, there's going to be. I reckon the second half of next year is when there's going to be an absolute like onslaught of of um, new developers building on-chain games. It's still even super early right now. It's still very niche, um, but there will be like a few big breakout games um, next year that will really put the eyes on 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 what we're doing here. And then you know, we have seen as established ecosystem of all these different games. Um, and, and 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 this like world you just come in and play you know my, my i want to see like uh you know a, a runescape style uh, expansive universe um you know uh, and like we kind of have a tractable path now to get there um uh so so yeah no i'm i'm yeah i mean the, 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 yeah anyway in, in a nutshell like a ridiculous amount of work has 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 got to where we are now and we're like we are industry leading in in what we're doing so i think the observations i would make are that if you were con- to conceptualize the last two years because it's the project is now just over two years old uh two years and two months something like that uh, it, it's actually now uh, in reflection looking back it was uh, an undertaking less in game building but more in research and development of how to put a game on chain and you know over the course of two years through uh grind you know in terms of like working through kind of new tech stacks um we've built out a few different things so we built out the the knowledge base we built out um the game engine with in, in kind of collaboration with the, the dojo community I mean there is on-chain game engine which realms can be you know realms at world and eternum and all the games in cyberterm can be built on but realms doesn't have to actually you know the DAO doesn't have to sort of to maintain this on-chain game engine because it's maintained across the whole open source ecosystem. exactly yeah mm. so that's just a yeah. massive unlock yeah huge unlock um and to build the best software you know you need a lot of people collaborating on it that's like the power of open source um and dojo is like iterating it like at to such a high velocity i mean i know the i mean credit to the the devs that you know, we're hacking on it like, you know, six months ago, four months ago, even, you know, even in four months, I mean, even in just like a week ago, there's been a big, there's a few big unlocks. Like the, the Eternum client that I just showed you is kind of on the, the bleeding edge of, of what Dojo is capable of. And like the networking stack now from like, you know, uh, the on-chain information to being synced in the client is like, you know, best in class um, and massively scalable. Um, but to get there, you know, it's been it's been a grind, and you know, yeah, as you said, it's been a lesson and um, exploration into all these things. Um, but it, it just becomes like an unstoppable force once you have the grassroots community building a software like that. And that's where we're kind of at right now. Is that we have this, you know, we're on version four now. Um, version five is probably going to be end of January, which will introduce a bunch of new things, um, and it's just going to snowball and accelerate. 
um, and uh, then everybody can share it and everybody can use it. And I think that you know what what it means is is from from a player perspective is that every time that you go to realms.world, you're going to see somebody who's modded or forked. Mm. Yeah, more content because it's content. it's, it's going to become really easy for someone to say, hey, I like that game. And I like that game system from, you know, yeah. from Dope Wars. I'm going to mash those two things together and add a leaderboard, you know, and, and, and they can iterate those things uh, over the course of, of a weekend or, or, and ship things to production in, 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 in weeks um, yep. rather than years. <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah, yeah. that's what we'd like from, exactly. a, from a player perspective, you know, it's just a constant stream of new things to do and mods and extensions to Eternum and the mm. other games in the world. Yeah, and the abstraction will just keep getting better as well. Um, and we like, yeah, the, the, there's light at the end of the tunnel of like how these things, you know, will be into production and like how to build in them, how to extend them. And there'll be a lot of like, um, uh, like, like not no code, but, um, you know, minimal code <laughs> to, you know, edit and extend the world. Uh, my hope by the end of next year is like, you know, a web interface where people can actually deploy contracts through to extend the world. Um, it's going to be one of my goals for next year to get to that point, to get to like an abstraction layer that allows people to kind of build Lego blocks um, and, and deploy into the world without having to touch Cairo. Um, but anyway, that's another story. Nice. Okay. And, and I think just one final thing to say is that um, when you look around the... The, the kind of autonomous world and on-chain game ecosystem. What games are actually on mainnet at the moment? And the answer is basically not it's many. Pretty loot survivor. Any. <laughs> <laughs> basically loot survivor. Yeah. yeah. And that was, I mean, you know, that's, that's yeah. yeah, it's yeah. it's you know it's a testament to like we, that that was built um, as a custom build kind of before Dojo hit maturity. And and one of the things would be nice to see would be somebody's come along, perhaps even rebuild loot survivor inside of Dojo. Next year, so it can it can fit into the autonomous world. Oh, that'll be done. That'll be done. Way. that'll be done for sure. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah. on that note, um, Loot Survivor, I think people are very familiar with. You know, the game. It's a immutable, immutable arcade machine. People come along and they insert Lord's tokens and they play a game. They look to get a very high score to climb the leaderboard. If they get to the top three, then they receive a tribute in Lords from every new game played. Very, very sort of, uh, that's the kind of gameplay loop. You know, you're, 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 you're going into the mist, finding beasts to fight and equipping better and better uh, armor and weaponry with the gold that you get from those fights. So it's a strategy game. And it was always designed to be a kind of composable, extendable um, game. So it's an immutable contract that people can permission permissionlessly build on top of. Um, and so now we're starting to move from the era of like people playing Loot Survivor to, okay, looking ahead at how to extend Loot Survivor. And so we're kind of seeing composability start to take motion. And there's a few examples here. Um, but the, the thing to start with is that, um, is that actually at the contract level, there is a reward built in for developers, for front-end developers. So it's the way that the, the contract has been built is that this reward um, unlocks after a period of time. So right now, if you're playing on the default version of, or rather the DAO built version, the DAO client of uh, Loot Survivor, all of the rewards are going to the top three places. But there is a, there's a timestamp in the contract and um, pretty soon, what will happen is, depending on where the player starts their game, uh, which, which front end of Loot Survivor they choose to play in, uh, the person who de deployed that front end um, will receive 28% of the Lord's tokens that have been used to play that game. So in that way, it kind of creates a, a marketplace for um, developers to come along and, and build you know, Loot Survivor front ends. And that does a few different things. One, it, it kind of makes the game durable in the sense that if the DAO version of the, the front end goes down, then there's incentive for somebody else to um, put up a new one to replace it. But also, it, it creates a kind of sense of competition because if you create a 
uh, more compelling or entertaining or useful version of the Loot Survivor client than the existing client, then you're going to receive more of the, the players. And so uh, I'm not sure exactly when the, um, the timestamp is in the contract. It's, it's weeks away from now, I think, so it's not very far away. And we're starting to see um, some new clients be developed. So just wanted to have a, a, sort of a quick um, look at some of the uh, Loot Survivor kind of composable builds but also to, to, to you know, put the, 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 the message out there that this is a great time to be building and extending on top of Loot Survivor. So uh, one that you will have seen if you follow us on Twitter is the, the Blade Runner um, version of like, the reskin of Loot Survivor from uh, Front Boat. Now, what this version does, along with changed aesthetic, is um, adds um, battle information. So if I just flip forward, so the battle metrics are displayed in the UI. So for example, you'll be able to look and see what the um, predicted outcome will be of various actions you might take in the game. So um, how much damage you might expect to deliver, how many rounds it will be of, uh, in a battle between you killing the beast versus the beast killing you. Um, you can look at um, stats kind of like actually integrated into the client now so that you can make more informed decisions. And so you can see how, you know, this client will help you to make good decisions and get further up the leaderboard. And so why people would perhaps choose to use this version of the client versus one that the Dallas built. So that's a great example. Um, another example is what's been built here by the uh, Chaydao um, Crooks and Caverns versus Loot Survivor kind of mashup. And in this, the, um, in fact, Lofi, are you, are you there? Yeah. Do, do you want to talk through what's happening at, with this one at a sort of a contract level, how these, how these are kind of integrating? Um, I'm actually, I'm not fully up to speed with how they, they, they guys have done it. Is anyone on the chat about it? Um, but so I believe that you run the dungeon and then you kind of level up a skill point um, and then you can use that skill point. So it's slightly different. It's kind of like a modded version. Um, yeah, you get like a buff if you like run the dungeon successfully or something. Um, That's exactly right. Yeah, so we can know that there is a, actually a live demo link out there uh, lootsurvivor.shadow.io but this is awesome. It's awesome to see composability taking place across um, Crypts and caverns and the realms, and the, the effect of you know the ability to become effectively a dungeon master inside of uh, Loot Survivor, set rewards, um, and allow people to you know choose character buffs. So it's it's, a, it's kind of a fork, a fork of the game. Uh, and then finally, another example of um, of uh, another front end that's been built on top of um, Loot Survivor by Black Mirror is just completely refreshing the look and feel and moving towards a more sort of 3D styling. So the, the kind of message is if you want to take this opportunity to, um, to build on top of Loot Survivor, um, mod it, extend it, fork it, it's, it's all there. It's open source and licensed for you to, to do so. It's the, always the um, intention of the, the DAO and developers to allow people just to come along and, and play with it. Um, so fork the repo, it's there. And you can, you can do anything in terms of um, any idea you might have. So you might want to add an achievement system. Uh, you might want to add a, uh, like a proof of skill. You know, for example, if, if somebody has attained a certain level in Loot Survivor, that could unlock a perhaps you know, an NFT or maybe even a soulbound kind of NFT that would then allow them access to your game, perhaps, or to perhaps to a club. So, you know, that, you know some kind of achievement system. Uh, another idea that, that is super fun is the idea of uh, resurrecting dead adventurers and um, allowing them to be you know, taken into other games. I know that, that the Grog has spoken about this idea. So if you have an idea and um, you want to build it, there's... The, the inbuilt incentive 
inside of the the contract for the front end supplier. Um, but also, you know, there are other routes to funding inside of the DAO. You, you'll you'll note, you know, the, at the end that there's a like, there's a game jam live at the moment um, with Dojo. We 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 sponsor those and we put prizes up, uh, and they'll be regular. So you can enter those kinds of projects into those events and go for the prizes there and get the support from developers as well during those periods. Um, and also, ultimately, there will be future rounds of um, Frontinus House. So what I would say is that the, the day to start building kind of on-chain games is, is today because there's actually plenty of, of access to support in terms of developer support and funding support um, there are mechanisms in place, and um, you know, looking ahead to 2024, as as, as we sort of, sort of illustrated, the, the tech stack is there, and we believe that, that 2024 will be the breakout year for um, for 2020 for front chain gaming as, as the tech stack matures, and essentially, uh, or critically, EIP 4844 is delivered to make the whole thing, you know, palatable in terms of gas costs. So the time to start building um, is now. I'll wrap up with some news. There's loads of news. There's always lots of news. Um, the first is that the realms of world has continued to evolve, and the projects sort of funded through Frontinus House, and they are starting to add their content to the to the to the um, to the hub of the whole realms of world. Make sure you go and check it out. I think. We will keep adding here, and as people add their prototypes and um, playtesting, they they will be accessible via the Realms World front page. Um, something else that's been added is the marketplace, which is currently on TestNet. So if you want to um, to test this, um, head to the Discord and the Realms World section there, and you can test this on Gurley. Um, is there any? Any further notes to add on the? I know that I was asked the question yesterday if um, other gaming projects on StarkNet will be able to use the marketplace, and I think that's a decision for the DAO, isn't? It? I mean, it's ultimately it's an open source, uh, open data. Um, there's not really anything stopping people, you know, forking or, or extending this, but. That's a conversation that we can have in the Discord about do other projects sell their, you know, use the Realms Marketplace. I think that's a good one to talk about. But yeah, the Marketplace will be, uh, initially will be um, golden tokens and beasts, but you know, over time you can see more and more things being added to that. Um, as Calc mentioned, um, there is a Frontinus House sponsors team, uh, the Herald of Loot, who are um, have been creating content over the course of the last few months. They've been running um, they've been running uh, calls inside of the Loot Discord and putting together newsletters. But going to 2024, uh, they're going to be crafting a weekly realms focused uh, newsletter. So this will be a Substack, the first edition. Well, we're actually republishing the first edition uh, directly after this call. So, you know, you can um, head to the Twitter in about an hour and you'll be able to, to access this. Um, and it will cover off um, the, the progress of the Frontinus House projects. It will look at um, what's going on inside of the realms in terms of like Eternum, for example. And um, the bits that are live or have just recently completed. And then a kind of look at what else is going on in the loop verse from the perspective of how realms could collaborate with those, those projects. So this will be like a weekly, a weekly digest. Um, it'll be arriving in your inbox, uh, depending on your time zone, but on kind of late on Thursday, um, if you're in Europe, early-ish, earlier, if you're in um, other parts of the world like America. But yeah, so um, you can look forward to a weekly update from about the realms from the Herald. This dropped just before the call, um, 
and thank you to, to, to Lord Ducky for, for, for pointing this out, but there was coverage um, in the uh, top, you know, the six predictions for crypto in 2024 from Pantera Capital. Uh, they made the observation that more computationally intensive applications will be moving on chain and included realms in there. So that's pretty cool. I think that it, it's just, you know, re reflecting over the course of the year, um, realms and the loot versus has been on a lot of people's predictions for, um, uh, you know, what are the next big kind of moves or narratives inside the blockchain from Bankless through to Pantera Capital, but through to your man Brian at, at Coinbase. Um, it's, it's, it's nice to see that even, you know, through the bear market that, that Realms and the Lootverse has remained that culturally and uh, technologically relevant. And it's a, it's a, you know, huge shout of appreciation to everyone in the community for, you know, keeping to talk, talking about it and supporting it uh, and manifesting it into, into reality. We have a um, we have a AMA scheduled uh, about 22 hours from now with the Neo Tokyo team. So those guys uh, are, <laughs> I guess, very bullish on on blockchain gaming and um, are notably or, or known for being, you know, quite a uh, productive. Um, community and people who build and who like to to um, be ahead of, of in terms of tech trends. So it makes sense for us and to um, introduce ourselves to those guys. So uh, that AMA is taking place on Twitter tomorrow, about twenty two hours from now at um, at eight UTC. I hope to see you guys there. Uh, and yeah. Um, Game Jam. So Game Jam is about one week in now, and there's one week left to go, which is plenty of time if you haven't started. But um, the Game Jam has a challenge to extend a turn. Uh, there are three equal prizes of $2,500 worth of lords, and there's a ton of other sponsor support from um, other projects, including StarkNet. So, you know, um, if you have an idea um, and you have some time, this is an optimal moment to um, come along and, and, and end, end your year and start 2024 as an on-chain game developer. I think that's a sort of super cool thing to, 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 to um, you know, choose to do. Um, and as I say, there, there will always be plenty of support from particularly at this early stage of the, the, the Realms ecosystem. Access to to, access to, you know, to the best devs and access to, to um, support from uh, from the realms and, and I think increasingly from you know Startnet and other people in the ecosystem. One three three seven um, wanted to say a few words at this point. Are you there, sir? Jim uh, Lord. Uh, Hello, I, I just want to share with you my thoughts and impressions on the past year. Um, first of all, I really excited and proud to be a part of Realms, and we've uh, all worked hard and come a long way, both in developing our projects and in learning how to manage, organize, and interact within our DAO and community. It's been a valuable experience being in a team where each member gradually finds their role and contributes their skills to our common goal. It hasn't always been easy. We've had disagreements and challenges, but we have overcome them and keep moving forward. This is an important sign that our organization is alive and always attentive to what's happening. We don't let our guard down and respond quickly when things go wrong. This year we start getting recognition from the public and seeing the results of our, our hard work and dedication. We've built assets that can't be bought 
our reputation, our community, our projects, our foundation and our partnerships. And we've achieved all of this independently without outside influences. Realms Lords are all around the world on all continents. We are covering all time zones and literally working 24 hours and 7 days a week. We are a truly global community united by a shared, shared dream. We are decentralized and equal. We are all directors here, so don't hesitate to take initiative. Do not wait for an invitation. Invite first, ask for grants, ask for support, realize your potential here. Together, I think we can do anything. And I believe that next year holds even more potential for us. Uh, so let's continue to give our best efforts to make it a year of great success for Realms world. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that's so cool. I was smiling all the way through that. Um, that's lovely. And you totally embody everything that you said just then in terms of like your own uh, proactivity in terms of initially loot and, and, and also the minstrels and producing music and then, you know, starting to contribute and now becoming one of the kind of core contributors to Eternum. Uh, and I know that you've, you know, been a real goblin as well in terms of your, uh, your perseverance and attention with, with, with Fertman. So thank you. What a wonderful, wonderful uh, note to, to end the, the call on. Appreciate yeah, that, sir. Yeah. That was great, man. Yeah, Lead has been a true goblin for the past year, working in the original Eternum client, now goblining uh, the client that we just showed. Um, huge effort. Um, and so at this point, I, let's open up to, uh, to the... Um, I can't actually look to see if there's any, any, any questions because then I'll lose the, the stream, but... Um, does anyone want to open their mic and ask any questions? Or are there any questions inside of the chat? I think we're okay, good. Go ahead. There we go. Okay, lovely. Well, thank you to um, everyone who... Um, who attended and to anyone who's watching the stream or other the, the recording. And yeah, thank you to all for contributions in 2023 and looking forward to going on to build out Realms World in 2024 with all you guys. Take care. Thanks guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks.